All right. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Corinne uh, here at Simplify, and we are super excited to have uh, this webinar about SAP Analytics Cloud's new Just Ask AI capabilities. Uh, our client partner and solution director here at Simplify, Dan Skinzel, is here to talk more about that and explain what it is, how to use it, etc. And I will pass it over to Dan whenever he's ready. Okay, all set. Thanks, Corinne. I appreciate it. Uh, good morning, everybody, or afternoon, wherever you are at. Um, thanks for joining. I appreciate it. Uh, like Corinne said, uh, today we're going to talk about uh, SAP An Analytics Cloud's Just Ask feature. And I'll refer to Analytics Cloud as SAC going forward here, just to shorten things up a little bit. Um, but with that, let's just uh, dive right in here. Uh, just a quick introduction uh, of myself. Uh, like Corinne said, Dan Skinzel, that's how you pronounce that uh, that long name there. But I, I am a uh, senior director here at Simplify and client partner, so I, I work with our clients directly uh, from beginning to end of projects or even before the project starts and even before um, contracts are signed. So I'm with you right from the beginning to the end. And a little bit about my background, uh, pretty much spent most of my career in the FP&A area and corporate finance. So I have a uh, strong functional background, but always had a uh, kind of a tech technical bent to my uh, 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 desires and uh, and so forth in my career and always lean that direction and all the functions I had. So I've done numerous BPC and SAC implementations and end, end planning, uh, including workforce planning, capital management, um, sales planning, expense planning, uh, even consolidations within SAC. So Anyway, the uh, I do have QR code on there. Obviously, you can see that's a good way to uh, connect with me. Uh, but uh, I'll move on here and uh, talk a little bit about what the agenda is going to be for the day. And uh, as we get into this, uh, first we'll go through a quick intro of Simplify, uh, particularly for those that have not uh, joined one of our webinars in the past. Uh, then we will get into uh, Just Ask. Let's find out what it is uh and also how do you get started with it and then we'll just jump right into some use cases and demos uh regarding it okay so with that let's just uh, jump right into a little bit of a quick review of uh, simplify we are a, a firm of partners focused on business process design uh, planning and analytics consolidation solutions etc we're staffed primarily with uh, folks like myself, uh, have a lot of uh, good, strong functional backgrounds, uh, as well as uh, technical acumen, uh, so that we can work with the IT side, we can work with the finance folks, even those as we get into more of the XP&A uh, world where we are pulling in other parts of the business outside of finance directly into our planning processes that uh, we can also have intelligent and constructive uh, conversations with those folks and be able to determine what the requirements are and so forth. So a good uh, knowledge base here here at the firm. And at uh, Simplify, we are an award-winning go-to partner of SAP. Uh, we have uh, won various awards with them uh, and hackathons, et cetera. Um, one of the things that uh, keeps us going and keeps us uh, uh, growing year after year is our main goal here. So I get out the little red pen. Um, our goal is to have 100% referenceable clients. Um, no one's perfect, uh, but we're pretty pretty close <laughs> to achieving that goal year in and year out. And that's why we continue to grow and have success with our clients and help them grow in their FP&A uh, journeys. Uh, we are located. Uh, Throughout the U.S. and Canada, uh, our consultants and uh, uh, leadership is spread 
throughout US and Canada, and we have office in Chicago and also in Montreal. We primarily focus on uh, the different business services and technologies around uh, business process design. Uh, we also offer expert and application as a service. Our prim primary uh, focus on the technology side would be uh, SAP planning, uh, things related to SAC. Uh, we also work with uh, group, group reporting, uh, BPC, and uh, also data warehouse, or data warehouse, data sphere, sorry, uh, data, SAP data sphere, uh, which works very closely with uh, SAC. And with that uh, functional expertise and the technical acumen, we have built out over uh, the last couple of years, we've invested thousands of hours in building this content. A lot of what we call prepackaged content that we that we offer our clients, and the and the purpose there being that there's a lot of things that are the same across companies and different organizations based on our experience. And what we do is we we have built out some of those applications that are going to cover most of those scenarios. Okay, we know every company is different, and we also know that we would have to modify some of the some of these solutions, but we get you most of the way there with these. So it really helps bring your uh, realization to a good value in your investment sooner than uh, later. And bringing all that together, we we brand all of those prepackaged content offerings under the brand of Planify. And this is uh, something that you will be hearing more about, but this is, uh, um, content that's uh, well suited for firms of every size. And uh, so we just uh, jump to the next page here. You can see what some of those offerings are as we look at the uh, planning side of things here. We can look at uh, everything, you know, on the revenue side, costing, you know, looking at the full P&L, and even some of the specifics into HR planning, capital planning, uh, full uh, financial statement, planning, including intercompany eliminations. Um, we have specific models for treasury and supply chain. And uh, we also offer as part of that, just the, the, the financial analysis, the FP&A services that would go along with it. So I'd encourage you to visit our website to and look for the uh, Planify logo and find out more about that. Okay, so, um, enough about uh, Simplify at the moment. I know we're all here to, to uh, get a better understanding of what SAC's uh, new Just Ask feature is. So what is it? Um, it really is, in, in, as we get down to it, it's a natural language query technology. Okay, so what you're gonna be able to do, maybe you've had some, some apps on your phone or what, ha what have you that you can just type in something and get a in natural language and have it produce an output for you. Maybe it's a, an appointment or something like that in, in your calendar, something very similar to that. Um, this is the first feature uh, on the generative AI side that's being delivered or has been delivered in SAC. There is more to come. Uh, there's more on the roadmap uh, for even later this year and into uh, 2025. Uh, so this is a point of emphasis as well for SAP as they uh, start to enhance the analytics capabilities with the advent of uh, generative AI. It really is also a part of SAC's augmented analytics, which includes a number of features that you may be familiar with already. So in addition to just ask, it's also the, you know, the smart insights, smart discovery, smart predict. Um, and just ask here, this is really going to kind of push search to insight out of out of the picture. It will be uh, taking that over at some point. So you would no longer have access to that. Uh, but at uh, currently, uh, there's still options to have uh, both of them, at least from the admin side. So we know what it is, but what can it do? Okay, at the top here, we have a, a few examples. You know, it's gonna allow you to explore your, your data using natural language. Uh, you can ask it things like, 
hey, what's my gross margin by store? Uh, top five sales reps last month. The different questions like these, even comparatives, you know, what are, what's my operating expenses in Europe? You know, 23 versus 22. Uh, you can get creative like that based on whatever your uh, business scenario is and the models that you have set up to uh, have just ask uh, access. Okay, it's going to present your, uh, your results in tables or charts or both, depending upon what the ask is. Um, you can see these over here, these charts here, these are uh, actually generated from Just Ask. Uh, I did copy these into a story and kind of resized them a little bit, but just the basis of these charts were created just by asking questions. So you can kind of see some of the benefits there already. Um, like I said, you can copy and paste the resulting charts into the story. You cannot copy tables into the stories yet, but you can copy the charts directly from there, okay? And one of the items to know, and it's somewhat of a limitation at this point, and I'm sure that's gonna expand in the future, but this is really going to work on acquired models and also uh, data that is sitting in Datasphere, okay? So picking up on that, uh, you know, looking only at the acquired models and, and data sphere, which is, you know, a lot of uh, data that it's going to have access to, there are some limitations on Just Ask just right out of the box, where they want you to limit, um, you know, having no more than five models being a part of this process. And I'll get into what that means here in a moment as we jump in to some of the management aspects of it. Um, this is, uh, I'll, I'll skip over that one. That's just kind of a formatting thing. Um, it is only going to work in English right now. So as far as metadata localization, you're not going to be able to uh, type this in, you know, French, for example, and expect to get an answer. Everything is based in English for now. Um, I do not know what the roadmap is for the uh, metadata localization, but uh, for now it is in English. And um, your results can vary based on the number uh, and types of models that you have. Um, so that is also being continued to be worked on. And then, okay, yeah, yeah, the ranking is supported in charts, but not in tables yet. So as you can see, even with the copy and pasting, uh, you know, there are some differences between how the, those table widgets and chart widgets are uh, able to be copied from one uh, section of SAC to another. And probably one thing that uh, might bug some folks as well is that you really cannot do any excludes on Just Ask at this time, particularly for time, okay? These are taken right out of uh, the SAC help from uh, Just Ask restrictions, so they have a little more detail on this. But the last thing I just wanted to point out too is that if we get beyond, you know, what is actually sitting in your SAC tenant is, you know, as far as what Just Ask can, can access, I do want to point out that here that Just Ask is only functional if you are on tenants that are hosted in AWS, Google Cloud, or Microsoft Azure at this moment. Okay, it, it's not, if you are in Neo or LI Cloud uh, environments that will not work at this time. Okay, so the function is limited in that regard, but this, these, these environments here, these um, uh, sources are going to, you know, take up most of the uh, client uh, tenants at this point. Okay, so now that we know a little bit about uh, what Just Ask is, you know, what it can do, what some of its limitations are at this point. Let's take a look at how we can get started with it. Okay, so we know it was just released. We we really like the idea of it and we want to use it. So what do we have to do to get this thing going? One thing you're going to have to do is is work with your admin. If 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 you're 
if you are an end user, you're going to have to work with your admin to get this turned on. By default, just ask is not enabled. Okay, so this is something that needs to be turned on. And that is done in, in the system admin section under um, uh, the default appearance section. And I'll show you where that is uh, here in a moment. But there are two selections where the default mode is always going to be set to uh, search to insight here. And uh, you can change this over to just ask. When it is set here, though, the admins, those in the admin roles, do have access to both. Okay, so you can still do both. But once you click here, you know, that's when uh, you're going to turn it on for everyone else, and then uh, the whole organization will be able to use that. Okay. So, as far as the administrator role goes with Just Ask, and there's really, you know, it's going to be more upfront type work here. But like I was mentioning, you're going to want to attach, and I kind of use that with air quotes, but attach some models to the process. And you're going to want to work with your end users to get those appropriate models uh, attached to the process. In other words, what kind of questions are they going to be asking? What are those important things that are going to come around that they're going to need quick answers to without having to go to a story, without having to go to a da the data analyzer to really dig into some details? They're just going to want you know, quick answers to quick questions that maybe they get from managers. Those are the types of models you're going to want to attach to this. Um, and then each model that is attached it's going to have its own parameters that can be managed individually. So again, this is going to be something that the admin would set up in conjunction, you know, working with those end users. Okay. And then in business, you know, too, in the FPA function, we tend to get a lot of the same types of questions, uh, whether they come from a manager or just in our, our daily routines, you know, getting those answers to quick questions. So those commonly asked questions, one thing the admin can do is set up uh, set up those questions ahead of time, those commonly asked questions, so that they can be accessed from a dropdown that is part of the just ask function. So you don't have to type it in. Uh, you get a consistent question that you can ask. And so you can know, be somewhat assured that you're going to get consistent results when you ask that question. So that's one advantage of using those. Another would be um, adding synonyms uh, of the dimensions. Uh, so maybe you have a certain name for a dimension, but some people call it different things. So when you ask those questions, if you don't have synonyms, sometimes you may not get the answer that you, you, you think you're gonna get. So again, maybe there's a uh, something like, uh, maybe it's a measure like an amount or a unit or or a value, something like that. Those you could see how those could all be used interchangeably uh, in a certain scenario. So these can be these words, these synonyms can be set up within the uh, setup of the model in Just Ask, so that when someone asks a question using those different terms, it knows what dimension to go grab. Okay, so that's quite helpful. So that's a little bit about how to get it set up and going. So it's not as simple as just opening up your browser uh, and logging into the tenant and just start asking questions. There is a little legwork that needs to take place at the back end. Okay. So with that, let's just jump into a, a few uh, use case examples and uh, we'll just and jump into a demo. I'm not going to ask these specific questions, but these are, you know, I wanted to put down some real life scenarios, you know, you know, say from my FP&A experience or others that, you know, some questions that you might get asked where you'd want to just jump into just ask and ask those questions uh, to get that answer. You know, like your manager asks you who those top 10 sales reps are in the US year to date. Uh, you know, he may have a question of that that somebody's asking him so or her. Um, also, maybe it could even get to the point where 
you know, you have, you know what you want to look for, uh, but maybe you're stumped on how to create a specific view of some data. Well, just ask the question of just ask, and then it could produce a chart for you. And it tends to produce charts that are best suited for the type of question that you asked. So you're not always going to get the same view of the of the data. You know, so if you ask a question one way, you could get a bar chart. If you ask it another way, you could get a line a line chart. So so experimenting with it that way is going to get you uh, maybe uh, different ways to look at your data. Um, also, you can add multiple models together, and based on your question, it will go and look at everything that's available to it to give you an answer to your question. And that could be going across different models as well. Again, that would obviously that would be something you would want to test heavily, experiment with it so that you you are confident that you're getting the answers that you uh, that you are looking for. So as I point out here, at this point, from what I can see, you're limited to your creativity and the build of your data for the most part, as far as the uh, capabilities of Just Ask, okay? So with that, why don't we just then jump in to some demo material here? And yep, you should see the my SAC tenant here in the background. Just pull up something here on my other screen. Okay. So what we want to do here is um, I want to just give you a little bit of navigation here as we start. Um, You'll notice these little light bulbs up here, and this is because I am an admin and have access to both. But generally, if I hover over this, you can see where in the very small print, it does say search to insight. So this is the function we're used to seeing. This one over here, this is the new one, same light bulb, but with the little, which, which is becoming the universal symbol for AI, is the, that little uh, star uh, that is uh, alongside the light bulb there. So by clicking on that, it's going to take me into a result here that takes me back. Okay, good. Now we're back to the uh, the blank screen, the start screen for Just Ask. And you can see here, this is um, very, very plain, very um, uh, easy to uh, get around because there's not, not a whole lot of selection here. This is, this is the place where you would ask your questions obviously, uh, as it's labeled as such. And earlier, as I mentioned, these uh, sample questions that the admin can add. I don't have any added here at this moment, but this is this would be where you would go for those. So if you have those common questions like, hey, I always need to know at the end of the month who my top 10 salespeople are, maybe then I, because I wanna do some tweaks to it, maybe add in a product line or something like that, this could be just a quick way to do that, where you just have some simple uh, predetermined questions there that you could you could access. And I do not believe there's any limit to those too. So that's why this filter is here, where you, you'll be able to filter on some of those questions. So you could end up with a long list of questions here, and then just kind of filter out what you're looking what you're looking for. Okay. Also, you could just select uh, specific models that you want to uh, hone in on your uh, searches, that could also be done here. But before we get into that, let me just get into a little bit more of the management of the models, kind of give you a little view of what I was talking about um, earlier. Um, one thing before, I'll come back to come back here, but I wanted to show you for those that are admins on here on the call, if you go down to in the left menu panel down to system, administration, and all the way over here to the default appearance. This is where you're gonna find where the conversational analytics section is. And that's where it's going to default to search to insight, but then you can just switch this over to just ask to really turn it on for all the end user base, okay? So I'll just, 
back into the Just Ask here. So again, kind of sticking with the management side of things. Here we can uh, simply add models. By clicking the Add Model button, you can add specific models uh, to, to the process. And you would do that here just like selecting it if you're going to add a model to a story, for example. Okay, I already have one added here, so I'm not going to go through that process. Um, but when I do click on the model, the one that I've added here called Australian Car Market, you can see one of the first things it's going to do is give you an overview. And this is going to be, you know, on these uh, symbols here, these are going to be all your dimensions. Uh, you have kind of the little version management symbol here, which is going to give you either your version or its category in this case. Uh, this is a an account-based model, so a classic model, so it's just a single single measure. The sign data here, we have a few accounts, um, kilometers, price, et cetera, down here. Now, one of the things you can see here, if I were to click on any one of these lines, which I will do here, um, now let's click on your box. So this is where we can start to add a little customization to it and uh, help out our users. We can click on the metadata here to give it a little better description. This is where we can add synonyms. So in this case, the um, gearbox is the actual main um, uh, dimension. So someone else could call it gears. Uh, someone could call it uh, maybe it's drivetrain. I don't know. I'm just uh, making it up here. And uh, if I hit that enter then, it, it can give me another synonym. There's obviously a lot of room here to do that. So we just hit save. Now we have um, an, an extra synonym here for the gearbox dimension. So if somebody asks the question and it revolt, they could say gearbox, drivetrain, and gears, and it's going to know to go to and use this dimension. Okay, so that's the whole idea of using the uh, synonym. So you can kind of see it's going to help um, get you to the answer that you're looking for. Okay. In the learning process of what you have in those models, you can also, this is kind of a, a data analyzer light uh, perspective of the model that you're looking at. One of the things we can do is kind of peruse the data that's in the model here uh, so that we have a clear understanding of what, what is uh, available to us when the admin is, is working, building this out. Uh, another thing that can be done here are adding some rules. Uh, so kind of a, like a like if statements almost. For an example, you know, once you give the rule a name, you can come in here and say, okay, if if any measure, for example, is selected, and I can, you know, say price, then I could come in here and say, well, then, you know, do something like like this. Uh, you can then tell it to um, let me select something here. So it can allow me to go into next, Let's put something in there for the name. Make it start to include, you know, in, in excludes and use filters. In other words, if somebody asks you something or ask, just ask something, what it is going to do is um, apply those rules when the scenario uh, is, is uh, encountered, okay? So these are these are things based on those conversations with the end users that you're going to want to uh, be aware of, so and knowing that you can build those rules to get more consistent results. Okay, and then lastly, more so from an admin perspective, there's always a a refresh log here that's going to tell you exactly what has been going on as you uh, refresh your models and, and so on. Okay, so that's kind of what it looks like from the back end uh, as far as setup goes. So what, one thing you could do once everything is set up, you can come here and ask questions and just, and just get answers. But what I want to show you here too, because I want to kind of get, uh, kind of get more bang for our buck here, I want to build a story as well. So I would not recommend doing that from here. 
frankly, because I don't, I don't believe you can copy if you go directly from here. So let's let's go. I want to go to the specific model here, and I'm only doing it this way because I know I can create a story from here, and my model is already attached to that canvas that I'm going to build. So once this blank canvas renders itself, now with this on the screen, now I can go up to my just ask, okay? Once I click on that again, it takes me back to my story. So, so you can see you can toggle kind of back and forth here. So let's see, I have some questions along the side here. Let me see how we what we can do here. One one thing um, you'll notice as I started typing the word kilometers, you can see that there's some light blue text alongside of it. And what that's doing is finishing some of what you're typing. It's assuming that I am typing the word kilometers. And if I want that, I can just hit the arrow key to finish it, okay? And once that kilometers is there, it's also going to suggest something else to put in there in this case okay maybe it's the it's the car model i think you'll quickly see here too as a user it's going to be important that you know and are pretty intimate with your knowledge of the data that is available so that you know the, the right questions to ask and to be able to get the answers that you need but what i'm going to do is i'm going to type kilometers by we'll go with that gearbox again um say for the last five years and always in demos you just always hope it's going to work and it should this is a fairly straightforward one you will notice it does take a little bit of time uh, because it is rendering a table as well as um, uh, a chart so this is the table that it uh, that it presented to me i know i i know i said last five years or year Maybe if I just add the S there, it'll narrow it down for me. Okay, so what it did before, just by the change of the letter, I did not have the S, so it just gave it gave me the data. It kind of ignored the five, but it gave me the data for each individual year. So now by adding the S here, I have the data summarized here, aggregated, for the last five years, okay? So this is my table symbol. I can click on the uh, bar chart symbol here, the graph symbol, and now I get a rendering of the chart. So our gearboxes are, in this case, all-wheel drive, automatic, front, manual, and rear. Um, this is Australian car market data, so obviously mostly automatics there over the last five years as far as uh, sales go. Once you render this and ask the question, it's also going to give you some suggestions to maybe dive into it at a little different different angle, maybe look at it, uh, in this case, if color is important, uh, brand, model, I could uh, look at this, just click on brand, see what we get. And that's really what this is about. You're just asking and, it, and it's your, you are kind of diving into and analyzing your data. Okay, so we can break those numbers down further. Um, maybe I wanna just go back to the gearbox here. Okay, so this is where I was uh, originally. So, so here's what I can do. You can see the kind of the universal copy symbol up here. So I'm gonna copy that and you see the message down at the bottom it says insight has been copied to my clipboard. So by toggling back to the story, I can either control V or I can use the menu up here and just paste it. Now I get the same exact chart that was rendered on the just ask uh, function. So the advantage of doing that, if you're building a story and you just kind of want to play with the data, so to speak, to see what looks best, see what can tell the story you're looking for, this is a good way to do that because it's going to do all the legwork for you behind the scenes. So this looks like a simple chart, but if you're not 
really up to speed on building charts, you know, it's doing all this work for you. And once you get this base chart in here, then you could, you know, change the color palette of it or do whatever you would like, adding uh, accounts to it or adding an additional measure. Just look at it as kind of your baseline uh, in that regard. Okay, let's just um, jump back here quick, uh, see if we can get another look at some data here. How about something like top five number of vehicles? I'll just use that, finish that. By brands. Um, well, the last 10 years. And I'll try to get fancy and say in a tree map chart, okay? Let's just see what we get here. I know what we should get, but, but we'll see if it, uh, there we go. So you can quickly see that not only can you ask it for certain types of data and slices of data, but you can also dictate to a certain degree what you want the output to look like. So as I called out specifically, I said, give me those top five uh, or the top number of vehicles um, in the last 10 years, but I don't wanna see it in a bar chart. Show me, show it to me in a tree map. So this is something you can look at and I can see just with a quick single glance that, you know, Toyota's the, the, the top one there follow, followed by Ford just because of the color and the size of the box. And again, uh, this might not be, okay, there is some data there because sometimes it won't show you uh, a table. It just won't render the table because it's just better uh, suited for the chart. But I can also, you know, click on my little icon there again for to copy. And because I want to pull that in here, I'll just control V. And now I would never put these colors together, but you get the idea that um, just by asking a few quick questions on that particular database or that model, I'm able to quickly generate something that, hey, you know, I've been asked this question, you know, what are the top vehicles uh, and also by gearbox over a certain time period. I can just take those, uh, you know, because if we go and use those in a presentation because they're just kind of standalone here, but if I just drop them into a story, I could then, once I save this, I could share this with anybody, uh, send it to them directly, uh, give them a link to it, and they would instantly have access to all of this data right here, okay? Then they could take and do with it uh, what they want, um, drill into it further, etc. So that is uh, kind of the quick look at Just Ask and some of the functions and features and the efforts that need to go into uh, pulling this together for you and your FP&A purposes uh, to get this set up for you to work with um, uh, your organization and get, get that done and operating effectively. So I believe this is going to take uh, a decent amount of trial and error. Uh, there's not gonna be any specific recipe that's gonna get this to work directly out of the box for you. It's going to be a matter of, like I said, the admin getting together with the end users, the group that wants to use the feature and determining what the best combination of models and rules and so on, and synonyms too, as we saw how important those are. All that combination of things is gonna get you a tool that's gonna be uh, well-suited for answering those quick questions for you. So uh, with that, I just wanted to uh, jump back to the presentation and just want to thank everyone for uh, participating today. Uh, the QR code here will take you to our uh, website, and we also have uh, 
this video or this webinar, the recording of it will be made available on our YouTube channel. And also, uh, there are some additional resources here that uh, are very good uh, uh, relative to Just Ask. There is a short, uh, quick demo video by SAP. It's just a couple minutes long, but just gives you a quick overview of Just Ask. There is some good SAC help information on Just Ask as well. I would uh, uh, suggest that you uh, go and take a look at those, even if it's a matter of just going into your Just Ask, or I'm sorry, your uh, SAC help and uh, entering these, these uh, terms there. Whoops, sorry about that. And um, you'll be able to get some, some good information that uh, support your knowledge that you've acquired so far. So with that, uh, again, I wanna thank everyone for joining and uh, look forward to uh, seeing everyone online next time. Thank you very much and have a great day.